Hey, what's up? Gary here. Looking to get started to connect your quad cortex to your favorite DAW. Let's go check out how to do it. All right, we're gonna keep this video brief and uh, to the point. So we're just simply gonna be looking at taking your quad cortex connected via USB to your computer and being able to record on your favorite DAW. I'm gonna show you a quick tip and trick of how I do it on my system. In this case, it's gonna be on Mac OS. I'm gonna be using Logic Pro, the latest version. And I'm just gonna show you a quick how-to on how to do that. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the other wiring if you wanna take different kinds of outputs and be able to, to run them through to another device. That's, uh, that's for a later discussion. Uh, I will go through in another video though, showing you the different wiring methodologies, ways you can connect to an actual power amp with uh, your wiring at the 4K method and also being able to take outputs and run them as something like a focus right or something similar as an audio interface but for this time i'm going to just use the baseline of the quad cortex being the audio interface in this case and just simply taking the usb cable directly to your computer and then loading it up in your uh, workstation so let's go check out how to do that at the desktop all right here we are at my mac os desktop and i'm going to give you a couple of quick prereqs uh, to get out of the way and then i'll just show you directly how to set up a new preset with a couple of things make sure your input and output is correct and then opening your DAW and ensuring that your input and output there is also correct so to get started let's first take a look at our quad cortex so i got both views open for you so that way you can see my my actual physical quad cortex but for now i just want to show you uh in cortex control setting up the basics okay so let's just assume that you're going to run your your guitar into input one which is the default here so we're just gonna leave input one okay and then here you can use multi-out I, I generally use multi-out i think it's one of the better to use but uh in the case of being able to send and be able to get it through to your daw what you really want to probably do is uh use uh, usb3 and 4 as well so multi-out will do that and it will select uh, I believe it's outputs one, two, three, and four, along with USB three and four. But if you want to be very specific at what you're uh, sending out to, okay, you can select USB three and four, and that's going to output to the, the third and fourth channels via USB advertised out of the audio interface that is the quad cortex, okay? So we'll leave it like this for now, just so you can see the proof of concept. And I'm going to select a semi-random, uh, amp here give me one second i always i'm a sucker for for this uh pb just always love that sound so i'm gonna go with that it's something i know very well um i'm also gonna go down to take a look at a couple of the others yeah we'll go with a ev straight too it sounds a little bit better with it okay so we have a standard amplifier and cab okay that's all we have it's a very simple signal chain going from our guitar on input one through here to the amp to the cab, out to USB three and four. And I have my USB cable installed from the quad cortex to my laptop. Haven't done anything else. I'm on Mac again, so Mac doesn't require any uh, um, drivers or anything else to be installed. But if you're on Windows, you do need an ASIO driver that uh, Neural DSP has in their download section to do take a look at that uh, because you will need that in order to be able to expose this uh, audio interface and be able to use it. Okay, so that is a prerequisite. Uh, most DAWs, uh, digital audio workstations, work about the same. Uh, again, I'm gonna use Logic Pro here, but I've used a number of different DAWs in my, my last couple of years, especially like really jumping in here from Reaper to you know Studio One, uh, GarageBand even, Logic Pro, whatever it is that you're wanting to use, they all work very, very similarly. As long as you have the USB installed and your system is able to see it, as an audio interface, you should be good to go, okay? So let's go ahead and jump over to Logic Pro and we'll just get started here. So I left it just sitting here kind of idle, but uh, but not open to a project because I wanna walk you through the whole thing, okay? So I'm gonna select an empty project here just to kind of show you from scratch. But I have a couple things that are selected here that are gonna make my life a little bit easier so I don't have to go through the settings menu and do this. So on my input device, I have the quad cortex, okay? I have a slew of different audio interfaces, obviously. I got a lot of cameras and things like that going on here. So there's lots of different things happening with my inputs and outputs, but that doesn't matter. It, you're still gonna see quad cortex in your system even if you don't see all this other stuff totally fine so for your input device you want to have quad cortex selected 
okay, for your output device. Um, Built-in output is just fine. MacBook speakers, just fine. If you have some other audio interface that you have speakers going through, totally cool. Whatever it is you want to be able to hear out of, go ahead and select that. Even if you're uh, you know, using a you know, complete bedroom rocker series and you're just simply using headphones or whatever, cool. What you're probably gonna do is just go to either MacBook Pro speakers or just built-in output. And that's more than likely going to just send it to basically anything that's listening, right? Anything that's connected to your computer to be able to hear. The biggest thing that we're caring about right this exact second is this input though, because at the end of the day, if you're wanting to connect to a DAW, you're wanting to record, right? So that's what we're kind of focused on here. In my case, I'm selecting built-in output plus black hole. Not going to go into extreme details of what this means. It's just an easier way for me to capture audio on my desktop to be able to record like we're doing right now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this opened up now it's going to ask me what do you want to start with as a first track i'm actually going to say nothing i'm going to totally oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, i'm going to totally just tell it yeah all right fine go ahead and create just with this but i'm going to delete this immediately because i want to show you exactly what i'm going through to make uh to make this happen okay so let's go ahead and delete this track and now we're going to uh, to start with a new one here so audio guitar and bass that's exactly what we're working with right now okay and you can see at the bottom it's going to tell you your device for your input is the quad cortex and my built-in output plus black hole is the device for the output side so audio output audio input uh to be able to catch the wet signal so the processed signal of your quad cortex in your daw you're going to be selecting inputs three and four now you can select uh the eight different channels you can select all of them in here individually and have them be mono channels or you can select them together to be stereo inputs okay so this gets to be kind of interesting because you can create a stereo tone out of something completely mono uh by the quad cortex simply by having your mono signal of your guitar coming through but then making it potentially stereo by splitting up through a couple of different uh, splitters uh to different uh cabinets and, and amplifiers then eventually being able to send out to left and right and actually panning that out you can make that happen here it's uh it's totally doable or if you want to keep that mono signal and uh, do other things with it go ahead and select your specific input that you like okay but the default to get started that uh, multi out is going to give you via what we selected earlier so just really quick not to go around in circles here but really quick we selected usb 3 and 4 here right so that's what our output is going to be going to right now and you want that output to then be the input to your daw does that make sense because you're outputting from your quad cortex and inputting to your, your Logic Pro. So you want it to know, yes, I am designating that channels three and four on this USB audio interface are going to be the left and right channel that I want to be able to capture, okay, in this. And then the audio out, you have a few different options you can uh, you can do here. You can totally just have output one, two. You can have it be, you know, to, to stereo out, whatever you'd like. Uh, what I generally like to do, I like to use a bus and send each one of my signals to a different bus. And then I can combine them at, later in the mix if I want to. That's much later into a discussion. I don't want to get into like exactly how I go about doing some of those things until a later video where we deep dive. But uh, for now, this is probably the best way for getting started with Logic Pro to get, get this going. It's pretty straightforward, okay? So we've got our quad cortex input, three and four. We've got outputting to whatever it is your output is that you would like. In this case, it's built in output plus back hole and create. Cool, there we go. Now we have a full, full signal. We have... Our input's working. If I go ahead and strum the guitar. Sounding good, right? Now, that's how you can go about getting the wet signal easily into your DAW. And if I hit uh, record, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the metronome off just to be able to show you. Now, if I go to record. Oh, I muted it. My bad. Slap that space bar. There you go. That's the wet signal. We've got it captured now. Now, one quick pro tip that I want to give you before I, uh, I end the video here 
is whenever I am recording tracks, I generally like, especially if it's a part that I know I'm gonna be trying to double or doing different effects with, I'll capture the wet signal, but I do like to capture a lane of just overall DI as well, because it always allows you to keep that DI for future use. And if you wanna be able to take it and make some cool stereo effects and, and just so, you know, just a peace of mind to know that you have the DI and the wet signal together, you could totally do that. You can record at the exact same time. It's really easy. So let me go ahead and show you what to do with that. So I just created a new track here, audio two. So in, just in case you missed it, let me delete one more time. You just right click here on this uh, edge of the bar and go new audio track. Okay, boom, there it is. Now we're gonna take new audio track. And in fact, you know, before we even get started, I don't want you to get uh, confused here. So let's go guitar wet, guitar DI. Okay, cool. Now let's go down here to the mixer and where we see guitar DI, which is this lane right here, okay. I'm gonna update this to bus one. I want it to go to the same bus as output of my other. And then on here for input, okay, we're gonna go down to input and we're gonna say one. And now let's go ahead and listen to what we have. There you go. You got DI on one, two, or you can select one, uh, one and two if you want to get stereo DI and make those things happen too. So what I generally will do is I will actually arm both tracks at times, but I might just not listen. So the uh, the part where you can monitor, right? Uh, input monitoring. I will disable input monitoring on the uh, DI track, so that way I don't have to hear myself, right? But uh, I'll still capture both with a record, and I'll just listen to the wet signal by having the interface monitoring enabled on the wet signal, okay? So let me just show you really quick being able to capture that. There you go. Now we stopped it. And let me solo playing back just the DI part. There you go. And now I will solo the guitar wet signal. And just for good measure, how about, how about those? I just said those. There you go. Now you've seen how to be able to record wet and DI signals with your Quad Cortex really easy in Logic Pro. Like I said, lots more than you can do with this. There's lots of creative ways that you can have this configured. But for now, this will at least give you an intro to being able to connect to this audio interface and make it work. There you have it, short to the point. Really easy, not that difficult to get started here. This is a very easy uh, device tool to work with. USB works pretty much the same exact way for PC and Mac OS. And most any DAW is gonna work exactly the same. You're gonna see it as an audio interface. You're just making your selections and getting that to work. Uh, one and two are gonna be your, your dry signal, your DI, and three and four are going to be your wet signal. And then obviously you have a couple more to be able to send back and forth with a bus of input and output to be able to send uh, to the device if you're doing you know more complicated recording or trying to get things going on in the room from the device as well as your dot. So there's lots of different ways that can work. Like I said, I, this is meant to be super straight, uh, very beginner to the point. Uh, I will go through a little bit more of an advanced uh, version of this video too, like I said, to um, go through some of the cable scenarios. Maybe get a little bit more advanced to be able to show you how you can start to maybe give you a, uh, advice on leveraging some of those outputs and such uh, to different monitors and things of the sort. There's a lot of different use cases that, uh, that make that work. Some uh, artists do actually use this type of methodology of using a computer, I mean an input and then outputting uh, some of the different sounds and synth effects and things that they have synced up via MIDI directly from the quad cortex out the front of the house too. There's a lot of things you can do that. Remember, this is still an audio interface. Even when you're on stage and you're playing and you're doing everything else, it's like a whole full-blown audio interface that can send or receive and do all kinds of things in the background too, within reason. So there's a lot of things that we can cover in the future. We'll definitely get to those. But for now, this was super informative for you. See you next time.